um, who was paid money for finishing off the schoolhouse, uh, finishing obviously maybe some repair work um, to the schoolhouse. Here's another alternative source to baptisms and marriages and, rec and, and, and burials that you'll find among the Church of Ireland registers. Um, pew, pew, pew registers, occasionally you'll find these, including the names of those who rented pews. Um, and here's another uh, alternative source, registers of vestrymen. Now you won't find these until the 1870s. They seem to be a, a post-disestablishment uh, um, type of record. If you're very fortunate, you might find a census return. Um, the, the, the minister may have recorded uh, details of all his, uh, all his parishioners. This is one for Christ Church in Belfast. Um, and I think I have another little slide here uh, telling me where they were living, what details of the age of the person tells me this, this chap, Sam Arnott, was living in Scotland for the last three years. Uh, he had three, well, two children, Sarah, Arnott, he, one, of whom, one of whom was a mill worker, uh, another son, Joseph, who was a cripple, and then a niece, obviously, living with, with Sam. So here you've got a little family grouping. Here's another one for Glenavy and Camlin and Tully Rusk Parish, the census 1873. We don't have any. We don't have the 1871 census. So, so here's, again, um, you, know, you can extract a lot of information. Um, we know that Richard Smith gives us occupation, his age, the name of his wife and her age, and uh, what she worked at, and what the, what the children were working at. A lot of them were servants. Um, and in interesting enough, they had a daughter, Alice, who later married and went to America. So it's all those little incidental details that are sometimes recorded in these census terms, which are important clues uh, if you're doing any family history. And of course, there's other incidental details on these census returns. You know, whether, for example, they had a baptism, or I'm sorry, whether they had a Bible, whether they went to, uh, when, whether they attended church, whether maybe some of the children went to Sunday school, and so on. Now there, now, there are also alternative types of records if you're looking at Presbyterian church records. Um, there are again very few records before 1800. You'll find that most Presbyterian churches do not hold burial records, but there are other alternative sources to baptisms and marriages like the session minutes, communicant registers, stipend books, pew rent books. The session minutes, they would be the equivalent to the vestry minutes of the Church of Ireland. Um, they will of course record in these sessions as they record the names of the Kirk session, and the Kirk session was responsible for the spiritual side, the spiritual life of the congregation. Church discipline looms very large in these early session minutes. And again, these early session minutes will sometimes record baptism and marriages as well. So again, if you find there's no early baptism and marriage registers, have a look at the session minutes because sometimes you'll find some baptisms and marriages recorded in the session minutes and that will not be sometimes identified in a catalogue entry. Session minutes will sometimes record the names of new communicants and sometimes that's all you get recorded in the session minutes, just a list of names of all the new communicants. And sometimes you'll get subscription lists recorded in these session minutes, a list of people who subscribe, for example, to the building of a manse or the rebuilding of a church. An early session book from a Lyle Presbyterian church, for example, contains such a, such a list for 1773. But one of the chief characteristics of a, of a lot of these early session minutes are discipline cases. Cases of disputes uh, between individuals are sometimes brought before the session. They were summoned before the session for all sorts of reasons, for sexual sins, fornication, adultery, breaking the Sabbath, uh, quarrels between neighbours, or between husband and wife, slander, unruly behaviour. I like this one in, in Carmoni Presbyterian Church where one husband who belonged to this church um, was forcing his wife to leave and when questioned by the session as to the reason he told them that she made more meat for one meal than was used and that the fragments were not properly preserved. So there was obviously a big dispute between husband and wife which was brought to the session for a resolution. The session minutes will sometimes record the names of those leaving the church, either to go to another part of the country or to emigrate. I just, this, is a, this is one of the early session minutes books. This is for Temple Patrick uh, Presbyterian Church and their session minutes date from the late 17th century. Um, 
And this is these are two individuals who were actually brought before the session um, for fornication, and they had to they had to confess their sin, and then they actually had to appear publicly uh, within, in church to to confess their sin and seek and, 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 and repent. So I mentioned these testimonials uh, that you can sometimes find within session minutes. This is an example for, I think this is Corn Money uh, Presbyterian Church. So these are testimonials that would have been received by, member, by members of the Presbyterian Church who were joining uh, Corn Money Presbyterian Church. So you can see here, this is 1711, 1712. So you can see there were people joining Corn Money Presbyterian Church from as far away as I think there's well, an example of Lima Valley on the right, yes, sort of view up from the, from the bottom there. Um, so somebody from the Valley. So you can see where people were coming into an area. Again, of interest from a local history point of view, you can see where people were moving into this particular area. And if you were leaving a church, you got a, a, a testimonial, sometimes called a certificate of this uh, certificate of disjunction or a transfer certificate. So here's people who are emigrating to America, and they were taking a register uh, of certif a, a, a certificate with them to say that they were a communicant member in their own church. So when they went to America and they went to join a Presbyterian church there, they brought this certificate with them to say that they were a communicant member in the church that they were left, and therefore they could be accepted as a communicant member in the church that they joined in America. So here's a whole list of names of individuals who were leaving, and you see they were all going to America. This is a, an example of a session minute book for Akadui Presbyterian Church, and here you can see lists of names of the poor, and not only just the poor of uh, the poor within that congregation, but you can see they also um, assisted strangers. You see a couple of references at the very bottom of the slide there: a stranger, a stranger uh, who were assisted. Now, if a if there was a dispute that came before the session. And it couldn't be resolved at session level. It went up to the next level of court in the Presbyterian Church to presbytery level. And some of these early presbytery records, uh, presbytery minutes have survived. Maybe, maybe the session minutes haven't survived, but the presbytery records are, have survived. So this is an example of down presbytery minutes. You see, 1707 to 15. This was a dispute between two individuals who were calling each other names. Obviously, it couldn't be resolved at session level. was brought up to presbytery level uh, to, 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 to have that resolved. Sometimes, again, within Presbyterian churches, you're going to get communicants registers. Separate registers were kept to record communicants. And the, the important thing is what the little detail that's recorded uh, on the side of these registers, you know, went to, went to Scotland, went to England, gone to America. So look out for all that incidental detail that's often recorded. So just a, 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 a more detailed record of that. You'll get stipend books recording details and names of individuals who pay them to the church. You'll get pew registers again for Presbyterian churches as well. Again, long list of names of people and the, because you have to pay for your pew. And finally, I just want to say something about Methodist church records and, and very briefly, maybe by time, about Roman Catholic church records. Again, very, very few burial records for Methodist, uh, Methodist churches. The earliest records begin in 1816. Interesting record which Prony has on Microclub here, and that was a, a baptism register that covers a lot of Methodist church, churches throughout the whole island of Ireland. We think it was some sort of attempt to compile a central baptism register. The peculiar um, records that you'll find uh, in Methodist churches are circuit schedule books, wonderful for anybody doing a history of a local area and looking at the history of Methodist churches, because these um, circuit schedule books will include a whole host of information, um, details about temperance association, returns of Sunday schools, manses, chapels, um, times of services, financial accounts, and sometimes you will even get details of individuals recorded. For example, here's people who were moving out of this congregation and moving to Clonus, and here are some people who are emigrating to America. You'll also get membership records. The Methodist Church is very good at keeping membership registers. Again, this is one for Balamina, 1826. You know, a census substitute. Roman Catholic records. Very few burial records, mostly all baptism and marriage records. A very few records before 1830. Some of them are in Latin. You'll find in the case of baptism registers, not only will you get the details of the, the children and their parents, but you'll get names of godparents and sponsors who may well be relatives. In the case of marriages, you're going to get witnesses recorded. 
This is an example of a Latin um, uh, entry. So all that Latin that you learned in school, you sort of thought, what, what good was all that? Well, it might come in useful now. This is an example of a Roman Catholic baptism register. Again, the names of the, the sponsors on the right hand side. Uh, this one here is interesting because in the middle you can see uh, that the, the priest has recorded not just the, the, um, the baptism, but recorded a marriage in there. And this person obviously gone to America and obviously maybe needed proof of baptism before he could get married. So the priest has actually written in the, the date when that person got married, which is really useful. And he's actually gone to, he'd gone to live in New York. <coughs> and just finally, Religious Society of Friends, excellent record, almost in a continuous series from the late 17th century. So have a little look at the, the catalogues of the Religious Society of Friends records here in Crowley. Vast array of records, registers of births and marriages and deaths, family lists, um, testimonies of disownment, uh, because discipline was very strict within the Religious Society of Friends and Quakers, books of sufferings, because, um, for example, um, the Quakers wouldn't pay tithes and they often, often suffered as a result of that. Um, the marriage um, certificates are wonderful. We get to get a long list of all the people who witnessed the marriage. You're getting a long list of local people recorded here. As a quick example of a Quaker family record here, you're getting the family and all the children recorded here in their date of birth. Wonderful record, isn't it? Moravian Church again, there was almost continuous series of records uh, from the mid 18th century. And uh, you'll find they kept very good registers of members and where they came from and if they, were, if they left to go to another Moravian church. It's a detailed example there. And they kept these wonderful diaries. And they record, for example, how many, who, who, who was born during the year, who got married, who died, um, who came to the, who arrived, who were the new arrivals in the church, who left the church. Um, and, and so on. So these very detailed diaries that they record. And also a lot of local incidental information is recorded in these diaries. So, finish there. Probably just about on time. So I'm happy to take